is Laura Hart, the CEO and founder of RoboFun, and I am here with my dear friend and colleague, Artemis Papert. Artemis, how are you today? Very good, thank you. Great to be with you. It's great to have you. So um, a few notes about RoboFun for those of you who may not know about us. Uh, we are located in New York City, and we have classes for children. Um, and we have very small classes, especially right now. So usually no more than four or six kids in large, large rooms. Everyone is masked. Um, and the kids are having a blast. Uh, and we're learning, we're playing. That is at 102nd and Broadway. And if you go to robofund.org and sign up, um, I send out a blog twice a week. Um, I am also a mom of a formerly homeschooled child who has just graduated from college. My blog gives you information about teaching, learning. I'm a former teacher as well. Um, so come and join us either online or in person for classes. We'd love to have you. So my guest today is such a special guest. Um, Artemis and I have known each other about 10 years. Um, and I have, I, there are certain people in my life who every time I have a conversation with those pe people, I, I just think about it over and over again, their insights, their, their intelligence, their perceptions about things. Um, and Artemis is, is in that uh, category of people that always says amazing things that are just so thoughtful. And um, Artemis has had an amazing life and we're gonna hear all about that today. We're gonna hear about what she's doing currently and how she got there. So why don't we start Artemis, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, so if anybody is wondering, I'll get this one out of the way. My last name is Papert, Simo Papert was my father. I always get that question asked a lot of the time. So, okay, that's- uh, In fact, that's how we know each other through yes. um, uh, Artemis visiting her dad and I lived near her dad and was close friends, so. So I, uh, I got involved with Logo when I was uh, 10 years old. I visited Seymour at MIT, the AI artificial intelligence uh, lab at the time then became the logo lab and he showed me this big room there was a whole floor of the building filled with computers that was in the 70s and it was personal computers were not a concept back then let alone computer in your phone and it was just you know Seymour being kind of a magician it was like normal, you know, you have a building and you have a floor filled with computers. What else do you have in life? And on so another floor- the normal was, of what a father was. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. Then there was a, another floor where there were some terminals where you could use this um, programming uh, language called Logo that Seymour and Cynthia Salomon and um, Wally Fortoig had developed about a decade late, earlier. So they wanted to have a programming language that was accessible to children and also access, accessible to professional programmers. Back then, the part of programming language for children was just crazy talk. Nobody was um, thinking about that. There was basic that was used for high school kids. There was another La language that was used for algebra, but Simon thought that's really strange because to use this algebra program, you need to know about algebra. That makes no sense. We need to have something that's more accessible. And so oh, oh, I just want to back up when you know. say when you said it was crazy talk. What you meant is the concept of a programming language for children. People thought was crazy. Yes, at the time it was like you know, no, nobody was doing that. Right. Okay. Got it. And so I got introduced to Logo like that right. after it was already had been pretty much uh, developed. I mean, it was not the very first uh, initial stages of Logo. So and Logo, for those of you who are not aware, is the programming language that Seymour and Wally and Cynthia developed for children. Is that yes. It? Okay. All right. And 
it was nice. It was exciting. It was my first contact with programming. But there was something that wasn't quite it for me. Mm -hmm. And back then we had screens that were, you know, green on black. Yep, I remember that. Occasionally you could have, and you had this blinking rectangle on the top yep. left that was your cursor. And then the, at some point you had white on black. That was the big progress. Yep. And, but there was no color. There was nothing. It was the culture around logo wasn't really an art culture. And basically at heart, I'm an artist. In my professional life, I trained as a biologist. I then became a shiatsu therapist, shiatsu being acupuncture without the needles. Mm -hmm. Then I became a Jungian analyst, but all along I was always doing art. Mm -hmm. Then some year, years ago, maybe 15 years ago, 20, my friend Brian Silverman and uh, life partner and his colleague Paula Banta created a software called Turtle World. And that was logo that had, in the meantime, the turtle had learned about colors. And that was love at first sight for me. You can use programming as a medium for doing art. And a lot of artists say, well, you know, if you do it with a computer, it's not really art because, you know, the artist, where's the artist? Uh, empowerment and what the artist's decision making. When I'm using a brush and a tube of paint or a pastel stick, it's not a pastel that makes a decision for me. They are my medium. I use them. Right. I make the artistic decisions. Yep. yep. So same thing with using programming, coding, whatever you want to call it, as a medium. Mm -hmm. I'm the artist. I'm in charge. The one advantage I'll show you in a bit what Art, how Turtle Art works and some of the work I've been doing with it. It's, you know, I can make straight line much straighter than what I can do by hand. I can make a circle that's much more rounder than I could do by hand. Mm -hmm. Has its advantages, has its disadvantages, mm -hmm. but it has, every medium has things you can do with it that you cannot do better than with other mediums and things right. the other medium is better at, you cannot do. Right. Another advantage when you, to pro use programming to make your art is you'll never run out of paint. Yeah, I'd like to use that color, but my tube is gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's too late now. I'm not going to run to the shop. I'm middle making this painting. I'm not running to the shop to buy more paint. Right. So it will never happen if you do it digitally. Right. So now um, you are in Montreal. And yes. you, um, do you want to show us more about turtle art or do you want to show us um, what you're working on in your own work? Turtle art paintings have done first and some are recent, some are le less recent. And uh, we're going to... Is this the screen you want to be on now? Uh, is the other screen. Let's okay. go and... So the, for those of you joining us, um, I'm so happy to have my friend and colleague, Artemis Pappert, uh, artist and daughter of Seymour Pappert, showing us turtle art, showing us her work as an artist in turtle art. And we're uh, pulling up that screen right now. Okay, okay let's see. And for those of you who are teachers, uh, having uh, been myself, uh, I'm also a teacher, and having used Logo starting in 83, um, I also love turtle art. And it's an amazing combination of what was fantastic about Logo, but it pushes it. Um, so for teachers in both computer science and in um, art studios, it, it's an amazing tool. Um, and for those people who are interested, uh, they can go to the website, uh, and I'm not sure, Artemis, are you frozen? Um, we've lost Artemis for a minute, but we'll get her back. Um, if you just Google tur turtle art, you will end up 
um, getting there. And um, Artemis will be back with us in a minute. And uh, you can try out turtle art. Okay, Artemis, are you with us? Yes. Okay. Uh, we have all three screens. Okay, let's see if, uh, let's go there again. I don't know if it's intentional or not, but we don't see you, Artemis. But maybe uh, you. Um, uh, but no, I, it's not intentional. The camera seems to be on. Are you seeing me out? Nope. We see an, a beautiful A with a circle around it. Um, um, while okay. Artemis is doing this, um, I will also reveal that I am also an artist and that while I was teaching Logo and using some of the functions that um, Artemis will show us, what, what I really loved was the random function uh, for both my kids and for for teaching programming and also for the artistic way of thinking about it, that you could really teach random in a way uh, for kids to understand looping uh, in, in really interesting and creative ways. And I'm super interested in seeing how Artemis has used this in her own painting or her own art. Okay, are we, is the video back on? Yes, I see you. Yeah, okay. And, and the, the screen share needs to be... Yep, so you will get there. Oh, are you saying I have to allow it? Yes, you need to allow it. Disable camera, invite guests, add source. Um, it's telling me it's allowed. Uh, on your end, you're seeing that I need to prompt you to and allow. Yeah, I get a sign saying unable to share the screen. Screen sharing is not allowed. Uh, double disable mute share screen. Yep, there we go. Uh, that's for me to share it though. Um, here's what I think we need to do if that's the case. Um, I think we need to postpone because there's nothing I can do to on my end while we're live. Um, do you want to try popping off and popping back in? Because okay, I've never I'm leaving back in. Okay. okay. So while Artemis is gone, I'm going to tell you um, some things about what's going on right now at RoboFun. We are registering kids for our week, our winter after school semester, which is both after school and also is during the day um, for the little pre-Ks. It is during the day and uh, after school runs Monday through Friday. And one class I'm really excited about is a Python class for fifth through eighth graders on Mondays. And I have personally been working on the curriculum. We keep testing pieces out with the kids and they, they love it. It's going incredibly successfully. So if you are watching and you would like to involve an older child with us, a fifth through eighth grader, come and join those classes. And we're getting Artemis back. We got, we got you. Okay, we're back and let's see if... So as we're... Uh, the. The other classes, as Artemis is trying to screen share, that are super exciting are our little coders and little engineers for three, four, five-year-olds, and they are super popular right now. And keeping in mind that we only have a total of four kids in the class at the time. Yes, we're getting there. Okay, Artemis. Here we go. Okay. So here's a... Uh... An image made with some random, not a lot. Okay. I'll uh, show you other, other images with more random. This one oh, has a lot of random. This so, one I was trying to use total art to make an image that gave kind of the feeling of a brush strokes. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. And the randomness there is the direction of the stroke, the the shade of the blue, it's all done in blues. Yep. The shade of the blue is also random. Uh-huh. 
uh, I repeat enough times so it covers the whole canvas. It really does have a brushstroke type look. I, I also want to encourage our audience, if you have any questions for us, to jump in. Um, and this one also made, i uh, not able to show it to you right now, but I did make the acrylic version of it. Oh, you did? Wow. Well, if you send that to us, we can post it on a later time, maybe both side by side. Okay, so here is, um, anyway, the Cynthia Salmon was doing a presentation a few years back at a conference called Crossroads, and she was publishing a small booklet to distribute to attendees there. And this is um, an, an image I was doing for the cover for her book. So I was trying to convey the old logo feeling of if any of you have read Mindstorms, you know that one of the things it talks about is making flowers. Or if you read a essay written by Harper and Salomon called 20 Things to Do with a Computer, Mm -hmm. It um, also talks about growing gardens. So here are the flowers and there are some spirals, the round one. And there's this one here that's a square. And back then it was called a squirrel. Basically, it looks like some recursion in there. Uh, not quite recursion. Is You repeat. I'll show you later how you make a spiral. But it's basically you're repeating changing just one value. Right. Yep. Okay. So at some point with Cynthia Salomon, we're playing with, uh, Cynthia is very interested in polygons and star polygons and spirals. So I was playing around with her and made uh, some image inspired with polygons. These are beautiful. Wow, that's a great one. Thank you. And this well, one is another one that has random. Uh-huh. So the random here is every small square has yeah, yeah. a random shade of the of the dots. Yep. And the other thing that's random is how the where the squares are placed. They are placed in a grid, so that is not random, but where do you show the the squares is random. Right. That's a beauty. This one has been inspired by, I was in an art exhibit in, in London and they had a Matisse, they had a Matisse cutout exhibit. So of course I came back home and I wanted to do something inspired by that. A lot of the inspiration comes from going to a museum and seeing something I said, oh yeah, I wonder if I, you know, if I could do something like that. and. So when you have an exhibit, um, you take your image and then you print it out on a, a printer in high quality. Is that how you exhibit it? Oh, no. I meant when I go and see an art exhibit in a museum. Right. I know that. Okay. Oh. I also do this uh, printing process that's called gicle, which okay. means spraying in French. Uh -huh. And yes, I have sent a few of the images to places that can do that. And I get the and then get them professionally framed. And a few years ago, I was, uh, Brian and I were invited at the uh, University of Costa Rica to give a workshop for total art. And one of the participants was the Dean of the art school. And mm -hmm. we decided that at the end of the workshop, that was a week long workshop, we would do an exhibit and every participant picked their favorite image and we got it printed, I call it printed, professionally framed, and mm -hmm. we had an exhibit at the university there. So this is using the same uh, image, the Matisse-like image, and it yes. looks like there might be some random in there as well. Yes, this one has random about the colors and orientation, which way the leaf is pointing at. So Artemis, is there, can you, I mean, it's probably not, easy to do this, but the, the coding behind this, or is it possible to share the coding behind one of these? Yes, I'll do that in a minute. Okay. All right. I'll show you some more images. That's more spirals. Mm -hmm. 
This is stars. Beautiful. So often I get one image and, you know, play around with colors, making it a bit bigger, a bit smaller, changing a little bit the, the orientation. The, that's another one that's uh, just a bunch of polygons that are repeated several times. <laughs> That's a beauty. Thank you. That's, That's another one inspired by things I was doing with Cynthia. Uh-huh. Beautiful work, just beautiful. That one has been uh, inspired by a Van Gogh image. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This one's been inspired by an underground um, station near where I live that has, has this kind of uh, decoration in it. Mm -hmm. So that's for the art show. I'll show you the, now I can I don't know if there's any questions. Um, if there are any questions, please type them in. And now you're going to show us a little bit of the coding background. Yes. OK. Well, I have a question. How long does yes. each one usually take you? Completely variable. Yeah. Because some of them, I get something that's pretty much what I want right away. Right. And then, you know, just needs a tiny bit of uh, fine tuning. And the other mm -hmm. ones is like, yeah, no, it's it, not really. You need to, you know, change the colors, change the size, change the shape. And a lot of the images I've done, it's, you know, dead ends. Okay, good idea. Didn't lead to anything. Yeah. And other ones, you are, it all depends. And some of them, you know, I'm, times are, you know, hit a, a wall with the geometry or the math. And, and they're like, okay, I need to ask someone that knows more than me about those things and get unstuck like that. And other times, you know, I spend more time trying to figure out what, you know, see if I can figure it out myself. So Turtle Art is a Okay, block so for of those of you um, joining us, or just so you know, what we're now looking at is a screen that is the Turtle Art screen. And if you're interested in getting Turtle Art, uh, what is the website that people should go to, Artemis? And I'll type it into the. Okay, I can. Uh, let me see. I could just. Uh... All right. I am putting it on the chat. So people who want to. So it's still somewhat in beta. So don't be surprised if you get any bugs. If you find bugs, you know, do let us know. Okay. The other place you can go is turtleart.org. Here, I'll just type that turtle art. Oops, if I can see to your art.org. And there's, uh, there's still, there's a uh, other version of Total Art that uh, runs, that doesn't require the web except for downloading it. The online version, you once you are in, you got, you got it. Uh, once you, you load it the first time, you don't. If you don't need the help from it, you don't need to be online. But it's uh, mm -hmm. if the, the options are online, online other than that, browser yep. crashes, cra crashes, and you need to get back online. It's you know you do need to be connected to the internet. Okay. So tell so us let me show how it all works. Sure. Okay. So Tothrot is 
has a very simple vocabulary. It's all around art and a little bit of uh, math. So here is, okay, here is forward, back, right, left, making arcs and setting the turtle and which direction the turtle is going to be heading. Here is about the turtle's pen. So why do we call it a turtle and why we talk about the pen is because back in the day, you had some big objects that were on the floor that were moving around and they had a physical, it was a physical object on a sheet that was moving on a sheet of paper and it had a physical pen in that was, as it was drawing around with the um, instructions the, the program was giving it, it would leave a trace with the physical pen. That's why we still call it a pen. Then we have some arithmetic, then we have some logical controls and then we have some naming and variables. So all in all, we have about 50 words of vocabulary. So the advantage of that is very quickly you stop learning turtle art, but you can learn with turtle art. So to start, so in the middle we have our turtle and we can give it commands very simple commands like go forward. I can tell it, I drag a block, click on a block, tell it to go right. If I put two blocks together, it will do both uh, commands at one time. Turn again, turn again, and here's a, a square. Now, Brian Silverman likes, likes saying that the art of programming is the art of being lazy. So, Good Instead comment. of telling the turtle that forward, right, forward, right, forward, right, forward, right, forward, right, and I lost count, I'm going to tell it, do it four times. So I'll clean my screen, click on there, and here does my turtle, my square. Now I'd like a square that's a little bit bigger. So let's, instead of telling it to do it 100 total steps, We'll do it with 200. Okay, better. And then an important thing when you are doing programming or coding is naming things. So I'll name this a square. And once I named it there, I have this block here that is, now the turtle knows how to make a square. So here's my square. Okay, good. I'm not, I wasn't planning on giving you a geometry class, so let's do something that's artistically a bit more interesting. So instead of repeating four times, I'll repeat 10 times, I'll make a square. I'll go right 36 degrees every time. And here's oh. what you get. So how about if we change that um, right 36 to a random number? To a, So then you learn wonderful things about ranges. Uh, okay, right. yeah. okay, here I have random between 0 and 100. I can decide that I want... So this is is a, a walk down memory lane, and I'm I'm wondering if it's easy to follow. But for everyone, basically every time the turtle is drawing a square, it's then turning, and it's turning between thirty degrees and sixty degrees. And okay. it's let's break first. things down. Okay. Here's a square. Then I'm turning, doing okay. a square. Then I'm turning, doing a square. Then I'm turning. Doing a square again. I'm turning. This time it turned less. Turn a little bit. Okay, so the other thing I can do is
let's do something different. We're going to do random colors. So this one, I want it to be forward 100, back forward 250. We're going to go back 250. And then we're going to turn right 10. But in between, we're going to pick a random color. Wow. You know what I, I, I both love about turtle art and love about uh, interviewing you today is I'm um, reading, surely you're joking, uh, Richard. or Mr. Oh, Mr. Feynman. Yeah. And there's such joy and playfulness in his learning. And I feel as though your work really also reflects that. Um, it's beautiful to, to see you explain it and to, to think about learning in a joyful and playful way. Okay, now we're doing to add more random. So I'm using a box one, which is how you make variables. Why is a variable called a variable? Because it varies. So a variable is we, you get a number and you tell the your program that you want it to remember that number. But it needs to know, okay, I remember what, and when you tell me 10 different things to remember, I get confused because I need to know which one is what and whatever. So we are going to store them in something we call a box. You can have an image of a little drawer that, you know, where a little box, you open the lid and you put a number in. Right. And we are going to go here, go there. So instead of giving it the a given number, we're going to do here and go here. And so we're going to go forward a random number and back the same random number, and then we are going to turn. Beautiful. Okay, and now I'm there thinking that, well, maybe the numbers are not big enough, so let's go up to 300. But you're only doing, oh, never mind. Yep, yep, that makes sense. So, um, Artemis, we are running out of time, but we're also having a lot of fun. Um, but I want to ask a, a couple of closing questions for you. Um, do you have a group of people that are also using turtle art in the way that you're using, and do you share with them? A lot of the images I'm doing were done with uh, Brian Silverman, and there was a lot of back and forth with images. You know, I shot an image and he said, yeah, that's good, but the colors are not quite it. You know, you should do, you know, different colors. Or no, no, this element shouldn't be here. You should put it over there on the screen. So he has, the, uh, you know, he takes the image. When you send turtle art image, the code is saved with it. So you can send it to a friend and they can get the code and, you know, changing the, whatever way they want it. So there has been a kind of a ping pong game with uh, with Brian with a lot of the images. Okay. Um, you, um, you might have- There might you. be other people out there. I don't know. I mean, there are other people that do use turtle art in, you know, right. what right. looks like it's a playful way. Right. So you can use it by yourself. You can, you know, use it with, you know, with a friend, you can, you know, whatever. So the, the last um, thing I want to discuss is, we, as you and I were talking about, does somebody want to go attend a turtle art workshop? And we both thought about this and realized what's really great is that this is a chance for you to figure this out on your own. I mean, you can get help, you can, but it, it's also something that you can do with your child from as young as four or five years old. And you can start to explore in a really natural way versus a course in this. Yeah. Um, so you want to talk a little bit about I was that? Visiting my nephew when he was three years old, mm -hmm. he was fascinated by turtle art. He was too young to be able to do any of the programming, but he was the the artistic director. 
He said, I want a triangle here. I wanted this color. No, I want it bigger. I want it smaller. Now I want a square here. Now I want a circle there. And he was telling me what he wanted and I was pulling the blocks and doing the programming. And so, of course, if you have a four-year-old, you are going to, you know, I'm not expecting a four-year-old to use variables. I'm not expecting, you know, the them to know, but, you know, some things they're going to be able to do, others they are not, but, you know, there's, as the child gets older, you know, there's more things they'll be able to do. And the other thing is like, there's a lot of math concept, but don't say that we're doing art, we're not doing math. Right. Which is how I that it says, art is not my thing, I'm crap at art, I don't, okay, we're not doing art, we're doing programming. Right. There, so that's the there, thing with sort of art is like, you know, whichever, you know, you can come from one side or from the other side. And right. Right. So that being said, um, Artemis does at times do online workshops. And if you're interested, uh, drop her a line at Turtle Art. Um, but in the meantime, uh, we don't seem to have any questions. I'm just checking. Uh, no, we don't have any questions. Um, and my last question for you, Artemis, which is something we talked about when we were prepping, how do you feel like you learn things? Because that's a theme I love to think about is how do we all learn and we all learn in different ways. And you were talking about how you learn versus how Cynthia Solomon learns. Yeah, the way I learn is I like to do a lot of exploring myself, but I also like, you know, when I'm lucky enough to have an expert I can't consult with when I get stuck. Right. And the art of, uh, you know, the art of learning and the art of teaching is having, okay, when do you just give the information to the person? Right. And when do you say, okay, I'll give you, I'll give you some pointers and let you figure it out. And there are times when I'm be doing workshop and someone said, you know, I'm trying to do this. I don't manage to get the code. And at times I said, okay, that's not the time to try to explain what the coordinate system is and what this is and what that is. So, okay, I just give you how to yeah, give you the, the answer. And, you know, at some other point where maybe we can check, you know, what the background info is in there, but it's not, it's not when the time and place is. And, the way I learn best is, you know, things that are connecting things. I have some kind of knowledge, so it's proximal mm -hmm. knowledge, but it mm -hmm. kind of pushes the envelope. Yep. And obviously things, you know, Seymour was coined the word construction, uh, constructionism, and it's when you construct your knowledge, you construct an artifact, you do something that's meaningful for you. Right. So, you know, if I'm going, if I, Children art is significant for me, doing art is significant for me. So, you know, I hope I conveyed my enthusiasm for it. But it was like, you know, I'll show you this programming language. And, you know, it's kind of boring and it's really hard to learn. And, you know, I don't know what you can really do with it. It's called total art. And, you know, <laughs> you're going to get a lot okay, of people. I back lost with. my audience. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So it's, you know, and if you, are if you are a teacher listening to this, you know, if you are, you know, I guess if you're a teacher and listening to this is because, you know, you want to do some more teaching in your classrooms and, you know, don't be shy of telling the children, you know, I don't know. Let's figure it out together. Yeah. At the very beginning of Logo, it was part of the Logo culture is, you know, you don't, as a teacher, you don't need to think. You just need to, you know, be willing to learn and explore and be a few steps ahead of the student. That's all you need. You ne need to share your love of learning. And that is the most important thing I believe we can give to children. So um, on that note, uh, that is how I have really based my company, my work with your dad uh, for many years, helped me really understand that it's all about all of us becoming active learners and loving what we're doing. So if you're looking for that kind of experience with your child, please check out robofun.org. And uh, Artemis, I can't thank you enough for joining us. And maybe a couple well, months from now. Thank you so we'll... much for the invitation. Sure. Maybe we'll check in in a couple months and see what you're up to, what you're working on. That you're... would be fantastic. Thank okay. you. All right.
thank you to my audience. Oh, wait, wait, we do have a comment, Cynthia. Okay. Um, would you show us using the leaf how mixing color and shade change the look and feel? Um, if that's a long one, we can do that as our next, or if you feel like you can jump in and show that to us quickly. I mean, I'll I mean, tell you what, I'll do it with a square. Okay. That will, and then we'll have color and shade and we'll do And hello to Cynthia, and thank you for joining us, Cynthia. Okay, that's not the way I wanted to do it. So basically we are having a square and we're gonna randomly Okay, change the color. Okay, and then I want the square to be filled. When I taught, we did not have fill as a function. That is nice. No, that's one of the things. There are a lot of things that Chotorot has that logo didn't have. Right. And now what we can do is... Yes, that's what I was looking for. A nice big repeat, and so we can see filled squares in different places, you know, as we turn. So all of this is really, um, we will at RoboFun be offering turtle art classes. We're not there yet, and I'm learning as a business owner that as much as I love turtle art, I can't add everything at the same time. Um, but I'm thinking also, Artemis, as you're doing this, what might be really fun is to do a turtle art show at RoboFun. Um, Absolutely. So as the world opens up, I think that'd be a really fun thing to look forward to. Okay, so we're repeating square, I believe. Yes. Uh, okay, and oh, wow, that's cool. That is a cool one. Ooh. Okay, and then I realize I need to go way more to the left and more down. So I feel like I'm getting an art show as we're watching. Um, in a way, the, the confidence upon which you're doing this and the, 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 the facileness upon changing your image, it's really fantastic. So now I can do it with smaller ones. And if I want smaller ones, maybe I have to do a lot of them. Great. Cynthia, is this what you were looking for? And instead of a square, I could do a dot. would be forward zero. I need to put a big pen size. And and the, the speed at which Artemis is changing as we're going along is is amazing. So um, you well, are- that's always... because I have like a few thousand hours of experience with Total Art yeah. behind me. Yep, yep, yep. I, um, I, uh... I do that here. What's the problem? So Cynthia tells us that, yes, that is exactly what you were looking for. That's great. And, um, oh, that's beautiful. Okay. I got it all right because, okay, what I did here, I had the set changing the shade and the color in my square procedure, in my square program. And when I thought, okay, it's easy. I, not do, I won't do a square. I just do it. A dot and but I forgot to have the the code for the changing the color of the shade where the dot was. So that's why it became all red because you know every dot was red. Right. 
All right. Well, this is this this is a beautiful image. Okay. My last question for you is: Do you ever do images online, print them out, and then paint on them? Actually, I haven't done th that yet, but I might well do in the future. Okay. All right. Well, I want to thank you again so much for being with us. Uh, this was just, it was so much fun. And um, it was, yes. I want to thank our audience for being here. And uh, Artemis will come back in a couple of months. We'll see what you're working on. And you're, you're actually motivating me to get back into doing this. So I may share some things in a couple of months that I've worked on. Looking forward to that. All right. Thank you to our audience. I hope everyone has a really, really wonderful uh, couple of weeks staying safe. And th this is an example of something you can do at home with your kids or on your own that is really fun. And I, I, you know, I, I just hung up the phone before this with my sister and we are, you know, everyone's safe, everyone's healthy, but we're not having enough fun. And so this is an example of something you can do that's playful and fun. So and thank you, Brandon, for your comments. And we're going to uh, call it and end today's talk. And we'll be back. We will not have a, a, a talk next week, but we'll, we'll be back the first week in January. So thank you all for being with us today.